Um, but here is one of the coolest things about this system here. Um, what I have right here is, is my RED camera, and I have two systems installed on the RED here that are um, part of these components. This system right here is called a Box Meridian. The Box Meridian is sort of, uh, it's got Anton Bauer mounts, it has V-plate, um, it has a transmitter and a receiver. And this thing can transmit and receive extremely high bandwidth signals, 3 gigahertz signals, essentially uncompressed video transmission. And it can do it the length of a football field. You can be in a soccer stadium and have the camera on one side and be on the other side, and you can get a perfectly clean signal at 3 gigahertz, which means you could send a 444 signal over one cable. So it's really, really high bandwidth, high fidelity. Um, these are not cheap. The set together... It retails, I believe it's around ten to $15,000, but the system is meant for really, really high stakes, high bandwidth, high frequency, high fidelity transmission over, high, uh, over large planes, especially with interference, because you can imagine a soccer game, there's nothing but nonsense in the sky, right? It's crazy, but these are really, really great, okay? So they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit more robust, but they're going to go a whole long way. All right, so, so this is a component. A lot of people are using IDXs and things like that. Those are really finicky. If you've ever used them, you know that you know, they only work about 70% of the time. And the time that you on set, and, and they kind of drop out and stuff like that. And they don't do something very important that this does. The other system I have here is mounted to the camera. You can see it's about the size of a deck of cards. It's called a Teradek Cube. The cube is extremely tiny. I'll flip my camera down. You can kind of see it. It's really, really tiny. Again, the size of a deck of cards. What this does is it takes the SDI signal and it compresses it down and transmits a compressed version of the file. So while this can take an uncompressed signal and send it half a mile, this system takes a compressed signal and can send it 200 feet. Now, when it's compressing it, it's only sending a 300 megabit signal, where this sends 3 gigabit. Okay, you guys with me? Mm -hmm. The reason I like them both is because there are applications for this, as you can imagine, and there are applications for this. So when someone says, I can't have all the components on the camera, I'm going to need something um, smaller, they have to understand that this will broadcast a small signal, smaller distances, and that they have a big signal, bigger, bigger, difference, bigger distances. Okay. The reason these two products are really, really groundbreaking and they're not just normal transition devices is they have embedded in them some signal detection. It's actually located, if you care, in the Hank metadata bitstream. And the red company had this great idea of sending some signals that typically aren't in Hank video bitstreams. When people think of metadata in terms of video, they usually think of like time code or user bits or something really basic like that, you know, uh, basic, basic, very basic videotape things. But red's like, why can't we put like all sorts of crazy information in there, like the file name, not just time code? Why don't we put record and stop information in there? Why don't we put more than just you know the basic things in there? So what Red has done is embedded in their bitstream run stop information along with record uh, time code and naming convention information. Okay, so to demonstrate how powerful that is. Hopefully you guys can see is this camera is not connected to anything other than I ran a, a cable for a battery. And then I'm just running the Teradek off of this uh, V-plate and um, you can hook it up. I've hooked up the power of the Teradek to the, the PTAP right here. Okay, So you guys see that? It's just connected. It's powering there. You can also get an adapter for this device to actually run into the, um, the uh, auxiliary uh, uh, um, <coughs> power source in the back or the front. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have a file here that's L1C3. So I'm going to put these out here. I want, um, what's that, five minutes? Okay. I want you to pass these, kind of spread them out. You grab one, or you grab one right here. You grab one right here. Or actually, give it to this guy right here. And then you guy in the hat, give him one in the back. And you guys got to kind of crowd around because I only was able to bring three iPads today. Okay? Turn them on. And you'll see at the bottom is a little program that we write called Live Play. You see Live Play? Click on Live Play. It's going to ask for a login screen, right? Yeah. Type in 
the name one. Put in just the number one and hit login, and that should launch the application. Is everybody launched? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you see in the top right, there's a clips folder. Push the clips folder just once. Now, bear with me. Okay? Don't do anything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a take right now. Obviously, this is happening right now. I'm going to cut. In the clips, there should be a recordings folder. Go into recordings. Do you see L1C4? Or C3, I think I just made. Mm -hmm. Click on L1C3. Press play. Do you have a signal playing back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We've just taken a signal without a human being, and we have, wow. I've just hit record. That's all I did. And you have a file in front of you. You can play it back. You can scrub it. You can go full screen. Here's what I want you to do now. Uh, you in the front row. What's your name? Ben. Ben? Yeah. Okay. You see there are four rooms in this program. These rooms are designed to be serving different people in the production. Performance is for a, D is for a director. Lighting is for a DP. Uh, scene and take is for a script supervisor. We can put a visual effects room. You can customize all the rooms you want. You have hair, makeup, wardrobe. I want you to go to performance. I want you to go to this L1C4 clip. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to just turn on like a bunch of those buttons. Just enable like bad at the beginning, good at the end. Just enable a bunch of them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just Ben. Just Ben. Watch what happens in less than five seconds on your other iPads. Did they show up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you show up in the back? No. What's that? Did you see Ben's blue buttons light up? We, yeah? We lost the file. You lost the file. Okay. Go back to recording. Um, what we've just done is created a database in which files that are transmitted can be metadata marked, metadata tagged of metadata that you can come up with. Okay? Circle me, delete me, kill me, kiss me, whatever. <laughs> And that metadata can now travel with the file and travel to other people. Do you remember when you logged in with the user? You can actually control who's a user. So you could say one user can see but not amend. Someone can't see. You can control who has access to whichever room. I just let everybody have access. So you can step on each other's toes. So you can just turn all bends. You can say, no, this take was good. You don't know what you're talking about. You could do that, and it would reset there. And always whoever's dominant, whoever's last, has the token. So the last person that does it has made the change. Again, you have to control permissions on set because, you know, you, you, you decide who can do what. I don't, tell, I don't tell you, you know. So this is a perfect example. Both these systems, the Box Meridian and the Teradek Cube, have the ability to interpret the metadata necessary to send the file name. Because you realize you have a file name. You have a red file name in your, in your iPad, right? OK, well, you have a red file name, and you have the time code of that file name. And you have the same duration because it's based on the run stop of the R3D. We haven't downloaded anything yet. But we're looking at it before we actually download it, and we've created a file. Because if I go to my computer, and I go to here, there it is. That's where the file is. So when it comes to security, the question is, where are all these files? They're not on iPads. If someone walks more than 200 feet away from the outpost cart, the movie disappears. Because it's on the cart where it's safe with all the negative. And then that information can get transmitted. So I already have an H.264 that I can put online. And we haven't even received a CF card. And it's completely automated. Do you see how fast that's happening? Do you see how we can make all this happen in like 18 minutes? That is powerful. You cannot do this with an F-35. You cannot do this with an Alexa camera. You cannot do this with the Genesis. You cannot do this with the Canon 5D. You can't do this stuff. That's why the RED has potential that hasn't been discussed, you know, hasn't really been tapped. It's just being tapped now because people are starting to get creative enough to think of stuff like this, you know? And, and this program we wrote because we just, all of a sudden, we're like, wait a minute. How do you... If this can transmit a file, why can't I capture that file? And if I capture that file, why can't I edit that file? Because remember, this camera, this file has time code and the file name. You can take these files as 264s, they're 3 megabits a second, you can edit them and I'll put a list. Because it's the file. It matches the red file. It's crazy. 